Hello Blood Sugar Champions! Today we're gonna talk about 25 superfoods that fixed my diabetes. Seriously, since I've made changes to my eating habits and starting adding more and more of these foods on my plate, my HbA1c went down from a catastrophic 13.3% to 5.6% and my insulin sensitivity more than doubled. I've lived with diabetes for 35 years and although I'm not a doctor nor a nutritionist and this is by no means medical advice, based on my personal experience and my conversations with many other type 1 and type 2 diabetics, I believe that these superfoods will help you tremendously regardless if you have type 1, type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes, if you are trying to get your blood sugars under control. On my top 25 superfoods list I have fruits, veggies, protein, some special and exotic items, so there is something for everyone. We'll go through the 25 superfoods right now and after that I will also talk about 10 harmful foods that unfortunately most diabetics are still eating and I think they shouldn't. But let's go to my favorite foods first and start with fruits. This video is sponsored by Ada. One apple a day keeps a doctor away, but not if if you're a diabetic or a pre-diabetic. Apples spike blood sugar and that's not what we want. I will share with you other fruits that I like to eat. Some of them don't spike my blood sugar at all and some of them spike it just a little bit and very slowly, which is exactly what we need. During those more than 30 years with diabetes, I tried all kinds of fruits and it was not easy to find these hidden gems. I sorted them from the least favorites to the most favorites. Number five is grapefruit. Grapefruits are packed with vitamin C, other antioxidants, and they have very good dietary fiber content. If you're a type two diabetic, or a pre-diabetic, they can help you fight against insulin resistance and weight gain as well. Grapefruits are more than 90% water, which makes them a great option for fresh juice to keep you hydrated. They are very low in carbs with only 9 grams of net carbs per 100 grams. And the glycemic index or GI is only 25, which is very low, contributing to relatively minor and slow blood sugar spikes compared to other fruits. Grapefruit has great GI number and net carb number, and these are really the two most important important indicator when we are looking for blood sugar friendly fruits. We want these numbers as low as possible. But one problem many people have with grapefruit is that it's too bitter. If you're like me, you will probably find the bitter taste of a freshly squeezed grapefruit juice pretty refreshing. But I'm sure many of you would like that juice to be sweeter. I get that. An easy and healthy way to make the juice from grapefruit sweeter is to add some stevia, which is a natural sweetener that won't spike your glucose at all. So try it out. My fourth most favorite fruit are raspberries and blackberries. Berries in general have high levels of antioxidants, fiber and vitamin C. And raspberries and blackberries specifically have very sweet taste, but they both only have 5 grams of net carbs per 100 grams. The glycemic index is 32 for raspberries and only 25 for blackberries. These are extremely friendly blood sugar numbers compared to other sweet fruits out there. So raspberries and blackberries won't cause that big sharp blood sugar spike unless you eat way way too much of them. I like to add berries in a low carb smoothie or a breakfast bowl with some oats and low carb yogurt. Now speaking of berries I have one bonus fruit for you which in fact is considered superfood. Goji berries. This one is not so widely known but it's one of the healthiest fruits with high levels of antioxidants that help regulate metabolism and protect your eyes which is a great benefit if you're diabetic. 19 amino acids, 21 trace minerals, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamins B, lots of fiber and fatty acids. Now you need to go easy on goji berries because unlike other fruits mentioned in this video, these are very very sweet. So they will spike your blood sugar a bit more. But although they are so sweet, they still have pretty reasonable numbers. The glycemic index is only 29 and although they have 49 grams of carbs per 100 grams, 19 grams of this is fiber, which gets us to 30 grams of net carbs per 100 grams. And I think they are well worth it, at least for me. A little higher in carbs, but packed with all kinds of other good stuff. They are mostly sold dry and you can get them in most bigger supermarkets or healthy food stores. They are great for snacking in small amounts. If the dried ones are too hard for you, you can just soak them in a bowl of water for a few minutes and they will soften very fast. Number three is coconut. 
Wait, you say coconut is a fruit? Well, I was thinking the same, but according to healthline.com, coconut, although it has the word nut in the name, is a fruit, not a nut. In fact, they claim that coconut falls under a fruit called droops, which are fruits that have an inner flesh and seeds surrounded by a hard shell. Other droops are peaches, pears, and even walnuts and almonds. They apparently fall within the fruit category. What do you think? Is coconut a fruit or a nut? Let me know in the comments. Anyhow, coconut is great for diabetics because it doesn't have a lot of carbs. It's mostly healthy fats, it's packed with fiber and iron, and it only has 6 grams of net carbs per 100 grams of raw coconut and 7 grams per 100 grams of dry coconut. The glycemic index is 42, which is quite high. But because it has so little carbs, the higher GI number is not such a big deal, at least for me. And you can find raw coconut in most tropical countries and a dried coconut in many Many supermarkets. I love many coconut products, coconut water as a refreshing drink or coconut milk that I include in many of my favorite recipes. My second favorite fruit is guava. Guavas are another nutritious and very delicious tropical fruit. Some of them even call it superfood. Guavas are native to Central America and Northern South America, but you can find them grown in some Asian countries and Southern US states. There are several different kinds of guavas. Ripe guavas can be yellow, green or red and the inner pulp can vary in seed content and color, from white all the way to dark pink. I discovered guavas here in the north of Brazil, where we have these dark pink ones. I eat them unpeeled and I eat the seeds as well. This way of eating guavas proved to be very blood sugar friendly, because I think the seeds and the pulp have a lot of fiber. And honestly, I think this way of eating any food is more blood sugar friendly. Guavas are great for snacking or as one of your components for your healthy smoothie. Not too sweet, but delicious. Guavas are also rich in vitamin C, A and B9. I found out that the Southern American guavas have only 9 grams of net carbs per 100 grams and the glycemic index of 12. These are extremely good numbers, even better than grapefruit. And guava is not as bitter as grapefruit at all. So that's why it's so high on my list. Guavas grown in Asia and Africa can have a higher GI around 30 and Indian guavas can have GI in the 70s. So watch out for that because apparently fruits from different kind of the words can have different impacts on your blood sugars. And my number one diabetes approved fruit is avocado. Botanically it is classified as a berry with a single seed. So it is a fruit. Avocados are high in many vitamins, minerals, fiber and healthy unsaturated fats. They are also super low in carbs compared to all other fruits with only 3 grams of net carbs per 100 grams. And the glycemic index is only 15. The best thing about avocado is that it tastes so good, so bad Battery, but it is so healthy. We're gonna move from fruits now and talk about my favorite veggies that I call superfood. But if you liked any of the fruits, please do me a favor and hit that like button to help this video reach more people. These vegetables are not only healthy, they are tasty, they make me feel good and most importantly they don't spike my blood sugar. I personally eat each of them at least once a week. Let's start with my favorite vegetable number seven. And this veggie is very nutritious. It has lots of antioxidants and vitamin A vitamin K and vitamin E. It's also rich in copper, iron, magnesium and other minerals. It has 12 net carbs per serving, so if you're on a ketogenic diet, for example, you might want to keep that in mind and not eat more than one portion. But if you're optimizing for insulin sensitivity like I do, these 12 net carbs are not a problem at all. This veggie has a distinct red orange color and you can use it as a base for amazing creamy soup, pasta sauce or just roast it in the oven. You guessed it, my favorite veggie number seven is pumpkin. If you can't find pumpkin in your store, you can go with the butternut squash. But pumpkin has less carbs and I find it a bit more tasty. My favorite kind of pumpkin is Hokkaido. And my favorite way to eat it is just roast it in the oven with a little bit of olive oil, salt and thyme. I let it cool down and sprinkle it with some chia seeds. The main reason why I sprinkle chia seeds over the pumpkin is to slow down the blood sugar spike. Chia seeds are loaded with fiber and fiber slows down digestion, which is what I want as a diabetic, because that slows down that blood sugar spike as well. By the way, the seeds of pumpkin are another diabetic superfood, but more about that in another video. Moving on to my favorite veggie number six. The main reason why I love this one is that it's so versatile. You can add it to almost 
any meal and instantly make it healthier. This veggie is not as nutritious as pumpkin, but despite that it's rich in antioxidants, vitamin A and C, manganese, potassium and many other vitamins and minerals. You absolutely don't need to worry about this veggie spiking your blood sugar, because it has less than one net carb per serving. It also has less than one gram of fat and less than one gram of protein. And with only 17 calories per serving, it's a perfect candidate to be added to your menu if you're trying to lose weight. And yes, my favorite veggie number six is zucchini. My favorite way to eat zucchini not so long ago was to add them as one of my main ingredients to my chicken zucchini meatballs. You can still find that recipe in one of my earlier videos on this channel. But these days I'm mostly eating plant-based meals and I add zucchini to different soups, plant-based stews, plant-based meatballs and other meals. Zucchini don't have a strong taste so you can add them to almost anything. It's a simple trick to make any meal healthier and less calorie rich. Or you can simply roast them in the oven with a bit of olive oil and herbs. It's so good. But moving on to my favorite veggie number five. We already have pumpkin which is orange, zucchini which is green, so we need to eat something red and yellow. Because what I'm going for here is diversity. I want to have the rainbow on my plate. Different colored plants are linked to higher levels of specific nutrients and specific health benefits. And I want a balanced nutritious diet, so variety of colors is very important to me. My favorite veggie number five has a delicious sweet taste, but not a lot of sugar, only four net carbs per serving. Plus it's super tasty, very refreshing and full of vitamins and antioxidants. And you can use it in so many meals. I'll have a few ideas for you right here in a minute. You probably figured out by now. My favorite veggie number five is of course bell pepper. One thing to watch out with bell peppers is that although one portion only have four net carbs, these are mostly sugars. So they can spike your blood sugar quite a bit if you eat a lot of bell peppers. But my favorite way to eat peppers is to add them to a plant-based bean chili or this homemade quinoa salad which I showed in one of my previous videos. From my experience when you combine bell peppers with beans, green leaves and other high fiber ingredients you don't need to worry about your blood sugar spiking too much and still enjoy that very sweet taste. Alright moving on to my favorite veggie number four and if you didn't agree with me on my first veggie pumpkin then you will definitely not agree on this one because this one has a lot of carbs and carbs spike your blood sugar. My favorite veggie number four is potatoes. Bear with me here for a minute. I want to explain why I don't think potatoes are that bad and why I have them on my list. A small serving of cooked potatoes has about 30 grams of carbs, which is quite a lot and potatoes in general have a high glycemic index. But potatoes are also considered healthy and nutritious food because they are rich in potassium and vitamin C for example. So let me show you a few hacks how you can still enjoy the delicious taste of potatoes without that annoying blood sugar spike. First of all pick the right kind of potatoes. You want to look for potatoes with the lowest possible glycemic index. Potatoes with the lowest GI are Charisma or Nicola, which both have GI below 60. Another great option are sweet potatoes, which also have lower glycemic index. And sweet potatoes are more nutritious compared to normal potatoes. Don't peel the potatoes, keep the skin on, because the skin has about half of the potato's fiber content. That fiber slows down digestion and helps prevent that blood sugar spike. Another trick to make the potatoes more blood sugar friendly is to boil the potatoes first and cool them down in the fridge before eating them. This step is super important because the cooling process creates resistant starch and the resistant starch is very similar to fiber. It's something that slows the digestions of those carbs in the potatoes. My absolute favorite way to eat cold potatoes is to make a potato salad. Mix the potatoes with green onions, extra virgin olive oil, Dijon mustard, vinegar, fresh parsley, salt and pepper and it's done. And if you want to be a bit weird like me you can even sprinkle in some chia seeds for more fiber. Next up, my favorite veggie number three. This one is an absolute classic and a great option for both low carb eaters and whole food plant based eaters. This one is for everybody. A cup of this green vegetable has only three and a half net carbs. It also has two and a half grams of protein, two and a half grams of fiber and with only 31 calories it's again a great option for anyone who is trying to lose or maintain their weight. This veggie is literally loaded with vitamin C, vitamin K and contains a long list of other vitamins vitamins and minerals. You can see all of them on the screen right now. You guessed it right, my favorite veggie number three is broccoli. And if you don't like broccoli or if you can't find it in your store on the day when you are shopping, you can go for cauliflower. These two have very similar quantities. I personally go for broccoli because I'm going for that rainbow. And 
cauliflower doesn't have much color. You can blanch broccoli in boiling water just for a couple of minutes and serve as a side dish. But my absolute favorite way to eat broccoli is to make a creamy, healthy broccoli soup. To make it, you just boil your broccoli florets in salty water for about 10 minutes. Move the soup to the blender and mix it to a puree. To finish this amazing soup, just add a cup or two of warm almond milk and a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil. Still everything together and it's done. So simple to make, so delicious and absolutely no blood sugar spike from that soup. You should definitely try this one out if you like broccoli. Now I have a feeling that my favorite veggie number two is going to be another controversial one. I'll tell you why in a minute, but first let's talk about why I love it so much. This one is very nutritious. You only need to eat a little bit of it and you get a lot of good stuff in your body. There have been studies done that showed that this veggie can boost your immune system and you will be sick less often. It contains vitamin C, vitamin B6, selenium, manganese and other beneficial components. This veggie is very aromatic and you can use it to boost the taste of many meals without adding anything unhealthy. If you're guessing that my favorite veggie number two is garlic, you are correct. <laughs> One glove of garlic is about one carb. So it's really easy to count if you count carbs. I love garlic. And the main reason why I said it's controversial is because it's so aromatic and I can imagine many people don't want to eat garlic, especially in the morning, and then have garlic breath for the rest of the day. I don't need to worry about it because I only talk to a camera. By the way, my favorite way to use garlic is to saute it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on medium low heat. This helps extract the taste and the smell of garlic into the oil and makes the garlicky taste much less strong. And this oil creates perfect base for many different soups, sauces or stews. Before I get to my absolute favorite vegetable, I have a bonus for you. It's a healthy blood sugar friendly side dish, which is great for every occasion. I learned how to make this salad dish in the north of Brazil, where they call it vinagrete. It's also very popular in many Spanish-speaking countries, where they call it pico de gallo. A small portion of vinagrete has only 17 calories and 2.5 net carbs, which makes it a very low-calorie, blood sugar-friendly dish. It's also loaded with vitamin C, potassium and other good stuff. And it's super easy to make. You just cut fresh tomatoes, onion, serrano peppers and lots of cilantro in very small pieces. Add lime juice and salt, mix everything together and it's done. If you're eating low carb, then you can use this as a salad or sauce with the barbecue or grilled meat of any kind. And if you eat whole foods plant-based like me, it's just a great all-around side dish. And I always have a big bowl of vinaigrette in my fridge. You can mix it with cooked quinoa, corn, avocado, beans. You can create so many salad options from vinaigrette. Now moving on to my favorite vegetable of them all. And if you watched my channel before, you probably know what my number one vegetable is because I also included it on my top seven diabetes superfoods list. And here are the top seven superfoods that I think every diabetic should eat every day, or if not every day, then at least multiple times a week. And let's start with superfood number seven. And if you watched my channel before, then this one might come as a surprise surprise to you because number seven is a kind of a seafood. My superfood number seven is shrimp. Now obviously shrimp will not spike your blood sugar because it doesn't have any carbs and its glycemic index is zero. It's low in calories, relatively low in fat and high in protein. But aside from that, the main thing why I like shrimp is that it's very nutrient dense food. That means you don't need to eat a big portion, but you still get a high amount of protein and essential vitamins and minerals to your body. Omega threes, vitamin D, vitamin B12 and others. I usually get raw shrimp that's already been cleaned up. Couple minutes to grill them or saute them in a pan. Now there are many other seafoods that have similar qualities as shrimp, but the reason I picked shrimp is that it's easy to make, it's tasty and you can get it almost everywhere. My other seafood picks that I absolutely love would be octopus, and crab. These are really tasty too, but they are a bit more difficult to come by and that's why they didn't make the list. But if you ever try grilled octopus or the sweet crab meat, I guarantee you, you will never want to go back. Moving on to diabetic superfood number six. And this one probably won't come as a surprise to you because I have glorified it on my channel before. By the way, when I was planning this video, I wanted to make sure that I fully understand what the term superfood means. Quite honestly, it can mean different things to different people. The widely 
acceptable definition is that superfoods are foods that offer maximum nutritional benefits for minimum calories. They are packed with vitamins, minerals and antioxidants. And my superfood number six is a great example of this. Another nutrient-dense food. It's a great source of fiber, protein, many important vitamins like folate and vitamin B1 and many important minerals like iron, magnesium and a lot more. And you guessed it right, my superfood number six is black beans. Now to be honest, some people in the diabetes community will tell you that beans are rich in carbs. They will spike your blood sugar and that's why you should not eat them. Well, let's talk about it. 100 grams of black beans, which is a bit more than half a cup, has 45 carbs. Sounds like a lot, but we need to deduct 15 grams of fiber. Now we are at 30 net carbs. This still might sound like a lot to some people, but when we look at the glycemic index of black beans, we will see that it's only 30, which is very good. When I eat black beans, they almost never spike my blood sugar a lot. And if they spike it at all, it's a very slow, steady spike. Nothing to be concerned with. What I love the most about beans is that when I eat high glycemic index foods like boiled potatoes, for example, which would normally skyrocket my blood sugar, when I combine those boiled potatoes with black beans, then my blood sugar will spike much slower and much less. I cannot quite scientifically explain this, but it's true. It really happens that way for me. A lot of time I cook my beans on my own, but when I don't have a lot of time, I get beans in a can. That's okay too. When I do that, I always try to go for those with no added sugar, fat and salt, or at least rinse them to get rid of any added salt. Now there are other types of beans and other legumes that have similar qualities to beans and they could as well make the list. Things like lentils, chickpea or soybeans are also great. The only thing that I would warn you about when it comes to beans and legumes are those processed kinds of beans and other legumes that have more carbs and less fiber. Your blood sugar might go up quite fast after eating them. And those are definitely not a superfood. Moving on to superfood number four. And on our list we already have seafood, beans and berries. So we really need to add something green. And my superfood number four is one of the most nutritious vegetables in the world. It's loaded with vitamin K1, vitamin A and vitamin C. It's a great source of manganese, magnesium, potassium, iron and calcium. And if you guessed that my superfood number four is spinach, you are absolutely correct. Spinach is a great nutrient dense food. It only has 23 calories per 100 gram serving, a little bit more than three carbs, but two grams of fiber and two grams of protein. And for these little calories is loaded with all those vitamins and minerals. I found that the glycemic index of spinach is 15, but to be honest in real life, I can eat as much spinach as I want and my blood sugar will not go anywhere. Now I might be a bit biased because I really love spinach. My mom used to make it for me multiple times a week when I was a kid and I really loved it. But I can imagine not all of you want to eat spinach every day and that's okay. Great substitute for spinach is kale but I guess that doesn't help because kale is not very tasty I know. So I would accept if you replace spinach or kale with some other green leafy vegetables and put it daily on your plate. Moving on to my superfood number three and this one might be a bit controversial because there are no reliable studies on this one yet. This one is also quite new, but I absolutely love it and I think it definitely belongs on the diabetes superfood list, at least on mine. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, I don't provide medical advice, so I guess I can put on my superfoods list whatever I want, right? This superfood comes from Peru. It's a great source of vitamin C, vitamin B6, iron, potassium and other important nutrients. But that's actually not the main reason why I added it on this list. It's also claimed to boost energy energy and performance levels, improve memory, improve fertility in men and even be beneficial for women in menopause. These are some big claims, so let's see what my superfood number three is and if it really can do all these things. My superfood number three is Peruvian macaroot. And I'm gonna get very personal now. I previously struggled with weak memory and decreased sexual appetite. And to be honest, I blame diabetes for these things and for doing the damage over the past 35 years. I decided to try maca. What I did is I started adding one teaspoon of this 100% natural maca powder to my breakfast bowl. And after a month of doing this, my memory and my energy levels didn't really go anywhere. They stayed the same, but my sexual appetite improved a lot. Now I don't want to get too deep into this topic because this channel really is about diabetes. It should not be about my bedroom adventures. But I'm telling you, this stuff really worked for me. And that's why I had to add it on my superfoods list. And I hope it will help some of 
you too. Moving on to my superfood number two. We already have seafood, beans, berries, spinach, macaroon. So I feel we need to add something that has great taste and something that will bring some healthy fats on our plate. Another nutrient dense food that has such a wide variety of beneficial nutrients. Look at the vitamins K1, folate, vitamin C and many others. And the minerals, potassium, copper, magnesium and again many others. I think most of you already know what it is. My superfood number two is avocado. Now avocado is not exactly low in calories. It's very rich in fats and although these are all healthy fats, avocado is a little bit more calorie rich food when we compare it to others on this list. But I still think it's a great choice for diabetics because it only has 17 carbs offset by 14 grams of fiber. So only three net carbs per 100 grams. And the glycemic index of avocado is also very low around 15. And I can confirm that my blood sugar doesn't spike at all after eating avocado. And I love to add a homemade avocado salad or guacamole to many of my plates. And I'll give you one tip. I prefer this big light green avocados. I think they are called quintals. They taste more fresh and juicy than the small dark avocados and I think they have less calories too. Moving on to the next superfood for diabetics and this one my friend is the number one superfood on my list. Before I get to it I want to remind you how you can get in touch with me if you wanted to. You can sign up for my Patreon site and you can message with me one on one. What you can also do is book a coaching session with me. I really enjoyed those coaching sessions that we already had with some of you. I talked with many of you about different topics, diet, blood sugar management, diabetes technology, and I would love to talk to more of you. Feel free to reach out on Patreon or on my website. Links are down below. Now I'm sure my number one superfood will not come as a surprise to those of you who have been watching my channel regularly, because I brought it up already a few times. This food has five main benefits. It's packed with fiber, it helps make you feel full and reduces appetite, it helps support weight loss, it's a great source of omega-3 fatty acids, just like avocado and it helps reduce post meal blood sugar spikes. And I'm sure you already know what it is. Of course, chia seeds. Wait, eggs didn't make the list? No, they didn't. And I'm going to tell you why right after I tell you a bit more about chia seeds. The main reason why I love chia seeds is that they are loaded with fiber. And when I add them to any meal, they will basically slow my blood sugar spike from that meal. It works for me every time. So I tend to add them to almost anything. It's crazy, I know, but it really works. Look at that. One ounce or 28 gram portion of chia seeds has 12 carbs and 10 grams of fiber. When I did a bit of research, I realized that when I soak or ground the chia seeds, the body can absorb more of the nutrient. So I tried to do that. Another great alternative to chia seeds are flax seeds. But flax seeds always need to be ground. Otherwise, the body will not be able to process them. Now enough about chia seeds and flax seeds. Let's talk about eggs. Because I know eggs are a sensitive topic for many of you. So eggs didn't make my top seven superfood list. But keep in mind, this list is very subjective. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist and I selected and ranked my superfoods based on my personal preference. But I have to admit that I have been wrong about eggs before. In one of my videos I said that eggs are one of the 10 harmful foods that diabetics keep eating. And many of you disagreed with me and let me know quite loudly in the comment section that eggs are not harmful. In that video I said exactly this. About 60% of calories in eggs come from fat. Eggs are also loaded with cholesterol, about 200 milligrams for an average sized egg. That's more than double the amount of cholesterol in a Big Mac. And you guessed it, saturated fat and cholesterol contribute to potential for heart disease, which is one of the potential complications when you have diabetes and one of the things you might want to be careful about. Now, after doing some more research about eggs, I realized that I have been clearly wrong, too radical about saturated fats and cholesterol in eggs. The dietary cholesterol in eggs is apparently not a problem because our body needs cholesterol, our brain needs cholesterol. It's never been proven that the dietary cholesterol in eggs automatically converts into the bad cholesterol in blood, which would be a problem. So I want to apologize for that mistake and I want to let you know that I no longer think that eggs are bad for diabetics. Actually, after doing that research on eggs, I can easily imagine they could make someone else's 
list of top diabetes superfoods. Eggs are a great source of many important nutrients, vitamins and minerals. They increase satiety levels. Clearly, they don't spike blood sugar because they have zero carbs and a glycemic index of zero, which is great for diabetics. And the main point I was trying to make in that previous video, which clearly didn't come out the way I planned, was that frying eggs or scrambling eggs in all every morning and eating them with bacon, sausage or some other processed ingredients is not healthy. Eggs, just like any other superfood I talked about in this video, are healthy on their own. But if you fry them in oil, which is highly processed fat, or if you cover them with refined sugar, then the superfood no longer is a superfood because you will be consuming all the calories from that processed oil and processed sugar. By the way, why don't we look at those 10 harmful foods that most diabetics are still eating right now? I made this video because I saw many diabetics either eating or being recommended to eat these 10 foods. But guys, no matter if you are type 1 diabetic, type 2 or pre-diabetic, you might want to cut down on some of these things. Here is why. Let's start with the most harmful food number 10. And it's very interesting because number 10 is very healthy in its natural form. But we often consume it fried, salted or or even with some fancy coating that has added sugar. You guessed it, number 10 are nuts. Wait, did you think nuts are healthy? Well, yeah, nuts are a great source of protein, healthy fats like omega-3s, fiber and minerals. There is no question about that, but you need to have them in their raw form. Don't eat those with added sugar, which will spike your blood glucose, processed fats in which they are often fried, and all the sodium from added salt. It's not so difficult to find all kinds of nuts in their natural form in the supermarket. Don't buy them at the gas station or some other quick stop place, because these often have the unhealthy ones. Moving on to most harmful food number 9, another one that sounds quite healthy, but in fact it's very problematic for diabetics. By the way, I sorted these items from the least harmful to the most harmful, so the one that in my opinion is worst come at the very end as number 1. And the order is based on my personal experience and my subjective opinion. Keep in mind I'm a type 1 diabetic, I'm not a doctor and not a dietitian. Number 9 is fruit juice. Now did you think fruit juice was healthy? Well it is. A freshly squeezed orange juice is packed with vitamin C, and that's a great thing. But it will spike your blood sugar extremely fast because it's loaded with carbs, and carbs spike blood sugar. It's kind of a problem if you are a diabetic. And yeah, oranges spike blood sugar quite fast because they have high glycemic index. And if you squeeze only the juice from them, you will get rid of most of the fiber that was in the whole orange, and the blood sugar will spike even faster. And that's why I'm not a big fan of juices. I prefer smoothies. You can still get all the good stuff from the fruits when you blend them in a blender. And if you combine fruits with higher glycemic index with fruits with lower glycemic index like berries in your smoothie, the blood sugar spike will become much more manageable. And my secret weapon that I add to my smoothie are chia seeds or flax seeds. These are loaded with fiber and slow down digestion, which will slow down that blood sugar spike as well. Other things you can add are avocado, Greek yogurt or coconut milk, because these things are high in fat and that fat also slows the blood sugar spike because it locks the carbs and doesn't let them in the bloodstream so fast. So don't be afraid of all the fruits and try some of the tips I'm sharing in this video instead and see how your blood sugar reacts. These tips work perfectly fine for me. But again, it's just my personal experience. The seventh most harmful food is a huge problem for me because I'm absolutely addicted to this thing. And although I know number seven is not good for me, I just can't stop consuming it. Actually, I did stop once for a 30 day or even a bit longer and I made a video about it on this channel, but now I'm back at it, unfortunately, and I can't stop. I just can't stop, I'm addicted. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know what I'm talking about. It's diet soda. Oh my god, it tastes so good. This one looks really innocent at the beginning, because if you're a diabetic, it makes a lot of sense to drink Diet Coke or Coke Zero instead of regular Coke. It doesn't have any added sugar, right? So it must be better. But it includes a lot of additives and artificial ingredients, including sweeteners. These ingredients are full of unnatural chemicals that can cause your body to crave more sweet foods in general, and might lead to overeating, which 
I can kind of see on myself. And in my case, another side effect of drinking way too much diet soda is that it ruined my teeth. I lost most of the enamel from my teeth, which will cost me a lot of pain and a lot of money very soon. I reached a point where I need to have a major procedure done really soon to basically add porcelain veneer on each of my teeth. This is a thin shell that's custom made, so you can imagine this will not be cheap. So stop drinking diet soda if you still can. This one is not up for discussion. I regret getting this addiction. Number six is another one that is commonly consumed within the diabetes community and often considered healthy, although it's not. Number six is muesli bars. Most of these healthy bars have added sugar, which will obviously skyrocket your blood sugar. And if they don't have added sugar, they will probably have other processed ingredients, which are simply not so good for you. Now, I'm not saying that you can't eat muesli bars at all. At the end, you can eat anything you want, right? But I personally would look really carefully at the label when buying those and try to go for those without added sugar and with the lowest possible amount of ingredient and maybe also high in fiber. Not necessarily misli bars lowest uh, in the carbohydrate count, but lowest in the ingredient count. Because the less ingredients the bar has, the more natural and healthy it usually is. It's not scientifically proven, but it's a rule of thumb I use. And I get it, most of you will anyway want to always look at the carb count, because carbs are the thing that spike our blood sugar, so I totally get it. But keep in mind that it's not always only about the carbs. Now I'm sure that for the most harmful food number five on my list, I will get in trouble, because more than one third of you selected exactly this one as your favorite. On my community tab. The most harmful food number five is steak. And I used to eat a lot of steak and beef in general, but I recently cut down on these things for a similar reason why I cut down on eggs. Although steak doesn't have any carbohydrates, it's quite high in saturated fats and cholesterol. So not spiking my blood sugar immediately, but definitely not healthy and potentially triggering other issues like the heart disease we already talked about. Now I totally get it, when you want to go out for dinner as a diabetic, it's definitely a lot easier to go to a steakhouse and have a steak with salad rather than going to some Asian or Italian place, because these places are guaranteed to spike your blood sugar to the moon. In the steakhouse you can get a really blood sugar friendly dinner. Steak with salad has almost no carbs, but eating too much steak, consuming too much saturated fats will negatively impact your insulin sensitivity, no matter what type of diabetes you have. Moving on to the most harmful food number four. And I hope my wife is not watching because she loves to invite family and friends for a Sunday afternoon coffee and cake. And the coffee and cake kinds of foods like donuts, muffins, cakes, and your 580 calories and 95 carb mocha cookie crumble frappuccino from Starbucks are loaded with sugar. There is literally nothing healthy or blood sugar friendly in them, and they will simply spike your blood sugar to the moon. Many of the things I'm talking about here will spike your blood sugar to the moon, so I probably said that already five times in the video, but it's true. Now again, I'm not saying that you cannot have a cup of black coffee in the morning to get you started, because that's exactly what I do. But keep in mind that even black coffee can spike your blood sugar because of the caffeine that stimulates your body and the blood sugar just naturally goes up. Plus studies show that caffeine stays in your body for 16 hours, and so if you drink coffee or any other caffeinated beverages in the afternoon, it will certainly impact, negatively impact the quality of your sleep. And quality of your sleep has direct impact on longevity. So if you want to live longer, take care of your blood sugars and get a good sleep. Don't drink too much caffeine. I will definitely try with my diet coke addiction. In terms of cakes, donuts and muffins, I am way stricter and I would suggest that you simply avoid those like I do. And if you really love cakes and just can't live without them, then maybe check a video that I will link down there, where I shared some of the tips for friendly diabetes baking. The most harmful item number three is pizza and fast food. This one is an evergreen. I hear so many diabetics, especially those who are insulin dependent, talking about how difficult it is to get the right dose of insulin and time it correctly when eating a pizza or a burger with fries. And the reason why it is so difficult is that these kind of meals kind of spike your blood sugar twice. 
they are high in carbs, literally loaded with processed flour in the pizza dough or the burger bun, and these carbs naturally spike your blood sugar really fast. But the other thing is that these fast food items are also full of processed fats, potato fries, fried burger or the pizza toppings with a ton of cheese. These processed fats are not only extremely bad for your cholesterol, but they also delay some of the blood sugar spike. The fats simply lock the carbs and they will release them to your bloodstream as late as few hours after you ate those meals. And that's why you might see your blood sugar spiking all night after eating a pizza for dinner. Another prime example of such food that causes intense and very long lasting blood sugar spike is a milkshake from McDonald's or that Starbucks mocha cookie crumble frappuccino or whatever it's called, which I mentioned a few minutes ago. Now I get it, it's super challenging to completely avoid fast food and eliminate it from our lives because we have limited amount of time and it's convenient to get fast food plus all these chains are making their foods extremely addictive. The meals are extremely addictive. They are made that way so that you come again to the McDonald's, so that you come again to whatever chain you go to. But moving on to the most harmful food number two, and I'm sure this will be another controversial one. And I know many of you will disagree with me, but I simply have to say it because I see many diabetics doing a low carb diet, which is not necessarily wrong, but they're eating way too much of this as part of the low carb diet. The second most harmful food on my list is deli meats. Things like bacon, salami, ham and similar things. And I know it's super easy to justify eating these because I had eaten way too much of them myself, thinking they are perfectly fine for me because they don't spike my blood sugar at all. And I can eat even large quantities of them and my blood sugar levels will just be fine. And I became addicted. Just like with Diet Coke, I caught myself eating at least one package, and these were not small packages, of deli meat every day. My favorite was mortadella. But similar to other things we already talked about, deli meats are full of saturated fats, extremely high in sodium, and they are addictive. This is not only bad because of cholesterol and heart disease, but if your saturated fat intake, especially from processed foods, is too high, it will negatively impact your insulin sensitivity, and you will need more insulin. And that's regardless of what kind of diabetes you have to be clear because when I cut back on some of those things I can also cut back on my insulin intake as a type 1 diabetic without actually changing the amount of carbs that I eat. Before I get to the number one most harmful food that most diabetics are still eating, please do me a favor and hit that like button if you are getting value of this video. And turn on all the notifications by clicking that bell next to the subscribe button. And that way you will be notified anytime I release a future video. And here is the winner, the most harmful item on the type one talks list. You probably won't be surprised because this thing kills 10 million people worldwide every year, according to world World Health Organization. And of course it's cigarettes and alcohol. The thing is avoiding those 10 harmful foods and adding some of those superfoods I talked about today on your daily menu is just the first step on your successful diabetes journey. But there is more you need to do to get those blood sugars where you want them to be. So if you want to lower your blood sugar immediately and avoid the risk of future diabetes complications, click on the video on the screen right now. In that video, I share all I know about lowering blood sugars and how I did that. Go ahead and watch it next. I will see you there. Ciao.